All right, a bit of an unconventional sale for me, and it's not often I can say that I have never sold this item on eBay before. Hello everybody, welcome to Commonwealth Flipper. My name is Kevin and we're in the Commonwealth Cabin. And you know, I've started to ship some things out on Saturday to make my life a little easier on Sunday because I gotta go to school on Monday morning and I don't wanna come back Monday evening and have just piles of stuff as well. So that's what I've been doing lately and here it is Sunday after we shipped like 13, 14 things out on Saturday. And here it is Sunday and I have 28 solds on eBay, on the Commonwealth Picker store on eBay. I have one sold out of the Homeschool Hustler store, which is also an eBay store that my kids have. I have one sold on Bonanza, and I think there's nine sales on CommonwealthPicker.com. So we have a bunch of sales today. So as the Cincinnati Picker would say, let's get to work. All right, before I forget, I'm going to go grab this because I already forgot. I'm going to go grab this very first Bonanza sale because I will forget that Bonanza sale absolutely for sure if I don't get it out now. It is one of those smushy mushies. I cannot wait till these are all gone. $7.49 maybe? I think for this one paid 50 cents. So we're not making much money, but they go out just at four ounces, which is really awesome. So my wife bought like, I don't know, maybe a hundred of these things and we're down to like 10. All right, I'm gonna try to run through some of these quick. We're not gonna do all 28 on this store and the other store. We're gonna maybe do two thirds of what's sold today and uh, push the other ones back till tomorrow. I love it when the vintage 70s clothing sells the Sunny Shares sale. It's a consignment sale and we've been doing pretty good with it. And my buddy Sunny is uh, receiving the other half of the money after fees, of course, and after shipping. This one sold for, I think, $18.95 plus shipping. And this has got some great colors to this one. Nothing inside at all except for the size tag. All right, we have a Twisted Radio Waves Dr. Demento CD. We haven't sold one of these in a while. Still have probably a hundred or so left and they usually go to viewers but this one did not six dollars and 71 cents for dr demento it's jerry garcia giving an interview to dr demento and in between each segment they're playing a uh, song as well so this is headed out for seven dollars i think what i say for six dollars and 71 cents we're into it literally for a penny all right a bit of an unconventional sale for me and it's not often i can say that i have never sold this item on ebay before but that's the case here with this Cowboys crock pot. It's the old style. I don't know how old this is, but my guess is it probably says on here somewhere. There it is, 1995. So this one I picked up, I want to say I paid five bucks for it. It may have actually been less. I can't re really remember. But it was on a sale on the Commonwealth Picker channel. And this guy right here took a little bit of time, but it sold for $50 plus shipping. And it is tested and it is working. And uh, it's headed out the door. So I love this sale right here. You know, we're going to make over $40 profit or right about $40 profit on this one right here. A little bit of shipping, a little bit of packaging, but a pretty good little sale. Here's a retail arbitrage by these de-icers, 10 cents at Walmart and they sold for $10. Not much profit in them, but they are headed out to somewhere in Minnesota, which is a great place for those. And they're going to Keith. Let me read what he wrote. He says, hi, Kevin. I thought I'd buy this before winter hits Minnesota. I thought it was always winter in Minnesota and I'll be buying more from your store. God bless you and your family, Keith from Minnesota. And Keith, I also saw and I told Reagan upstairs that you ordered a few things, a few more things, I think, out of the CommonwealthPicker.com store. So I'll have to check that out in a minute. Thanks, Keith. All right, here is a sale that uh, I really didn't pick this up for resale purposes. I picked this up to make over the years, proud of me over there because he sells Wedgwood. So at any rate, this is uh, made in England, a little Wedgwood plate. It's not even in great shape, which is why it took a little bit of time to sell. But I think I paid maybe a buck for it, maybe 50 cents. I can't remember. And it sold for 10 free shipping, but it is going to go out. It'll probably, because I'm going to package it up, go out at eight ounces, which means the profit on it is just over $4, which isn't much. But I just wanted to say that I have, for the first time, sold some Wedgwood on my channel. All right, to continue the trend of items I have never sold before, let's go check this one out. All right, it should be, it's cloth, it should be in the Auburn bin, Alabama. And it is, and it is, it looks beat up right there. It's really not in that bad of shape. It is a Stratton ski flag. So if you've been watching the other channel, you saw me pick this up. And I picked it up not knowing what it was, 
but thinking there is somebody out there who's going to want this thing. So it turns out Stratton, and I found this out by some viewers, I hadn't even listed it yet, I don't think anyways, that some viewers said Stratton is a ski resort in Vermont, and this thing is going to Connecticut, and head skis, obviously, is head skis. This is the poor side right here, and looking at it a little closer, it looks to me, and I think another viewer said this, that this is like a downhill ski, you know, this is the flags on the downhill, where they have a pole through each side, and they're trying to get through, the, what is it, slalom, is that what they call it? I'm not much of a skier, sorry. And I figured, you know, somebody up there is going to want this for their little resort cabin or something like that. And that's uh, what happened. I didn't know what to price this thing for. I probably underpriced it, but the condition wasn't great. And I knew there was a small market. I put it out there for 25 plus shipping. It took a little while to sell. So I think I was in the ballpark. I think if I would have put it out there for 50 or best offer, I might have got an offer for like 40 bucks over time. But uh, I'm still happy with it. I paid five bucks for this and a giant tub full of Viagra blood pressure cuffs. And so this is putting us in the pure profit, probably at $19 profit so far. And all of those Viagra blood pressure cuffs are going to be pure profit. Not much, but there's a bunch of them. So it's going to end up being a pretty good deal. All right, a couple, let's see, VHS Kingfish. This VHS, not all VHS are bad. Of course, horror VHS is great. I've talked about that many, many times. But uh, this one, I don't know, maybe it's never gone to DVD, who knows. But this VHS, not even in great shape, sold for $10 plus shipping. So you're not making a bunch of money on it, but I bet I'm into it for maybe a dime at most. And the other item should be up here, there it is. How about them cowboys? Two cowboy items today. I'm not much of a cowboy fan, but that's okay. I'm a fan if they sell. So that's good stuff. I'm glad somebody's a fan. This didn't go for much. I paid a quarter for it. It went for seven, maybe. So we're making a little bit of money on it. All right, next one I have to think of here. I'm thinking maybe, I don't know. Is it in a drawer? It might be back here. I think it's back here. It's probably in our Pennsylvania bin, is my guess. It's got some electronics. And that's my wrong guess. Not good. Texas, maybe? No, maybe I should go check the SKUs. California bin, maybe. Maybe I've lost my mind. Did I bring them out here already? <laughs> That's why it's not here. I picked them up earlier. That's funny. Okay, Panasonic. Got some Panasonic phones. I have passed on so many phones lately and there is money in phones. I just hate them. I hate charging them, cleaning them testing them, making sure there's no corrosion. I just hate it. They're a giant tangled mess in a box. So I just promised myself that if I had some, I wasn't going to buy any more. Well, I think this is the end of the road for these. So now I can go out and buy one more set. And that's how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to have one set until it's sold. And it can't even just not be listed. One set until it's sold. And then I'll go out and buy another one. And I think that'll control the problem. So... I think I might have a few more of these chargers in there, but that's about it. And I just passed up like four or five good sets just this weekend. So $20 and $20. They sold to different people. And that often happens if you have multi-quantity. One sells, the other person gets an alert and is like, uh-oh, last one, and they buy it as well. These do. I have the perfect box for these. And these are able to stay under uh, 16 ounces. I think they go right at 12, maybe 11.9, but I'm not positive. I have to check that. So I do free shipping with it. Here's the box that I use. Ooh, boy, it looks like I only have one more in here. Need to go get another one. So there it is right there. Supply Hut 7x4x2. By by and that is, I think, in the affiliate links. Might not be. I don't remember. All right, next one and last one for in here that we're going to do today. We have a bunch inside, too is going to be in the, I can't remember, maybe Froggy Flips, which is appropriate because I was watching him earlier. Although now that I'm thinking about it, maybe a lot of Josh. Nope, there it is, I see it in the front, Froggy Flips. There it is right there. And this came from a sale, I can't remember the title of it, but it was like, uh, is this a hoarder house or an estate sale? And we're in the pure profit there by a long margin. Just some paper make pencils. I think it's supposed to be a pen and pencil set but they're both pencils, so it's not the actual set. That's okay, I think it sold for $12 plus shipping. 
right, we're gonna get the kids in here. One homeschool hustler store sale, and then Reagan will help us out and tell us what's sold. We're gonna probably do two or three today from the CommonwealthPicker.com store, and then maybe a few tomorrow as well. And then we'll go inside and have a couple of Animan and a few more good sales inside as well. All right, Reagan has some sales out of the CommonwealthPicker.com store. Who you got tonight? Angel, Michael. Richard and Keith. All right. Yes. And I mentioned Keith, and you've done a good job, and you signed a bunch of cards, didn't you? Yep. All right. Well, that's awesome. And I packaged up the mugs, and she did everything else, didn't you? Yep. All right. And we got some more to go, but we'll put those on tomorrow's video. What do you think? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye. And don't forget to get your sticker at CommonwealthPicker.com. All right, y'all. Turner did a wonderful little homeschool hustler video and told us all about this Kinderbot that I had bought for less than five bucks. It was five, and we put it in a bundle, so we got a little bit of a deal. And we sold it for nineteen ninety-five. I regretted buying it because it was missing a tool piece that the robot's holding, but it was tested working, and so we still sold it and still made a little profit. So, sorry, Turner. All right, we have another. Under Armour shirt going out. This one was one of the cheaper ones we've sold, and we did not make much on this because we're probably into this shirt for at least a dollar. But it sold for eleven dollars, ten ninety five free shipping. So you know it's maybe a five dollar profit. Usually my wife will lot up shirts like that that aren't kind of borderline ish, and she'll put them together in a lot of a bunch of mediums and sell them off that way. So there's not as much work, and you make a little less money. But overall, the time that you spend on it makes a little bit more sense for the money you're making. But apparently that one missed, so maybe she made a lot already and I had bought that separate somewhere else, so who knows. I bought this at a sale. I think I lost the footage for this one and a couple more at the end of the day. I can't even remember what happened, but it was a couple of really good sales. And this one was on one of those sales and we did really, really well. Bought a box full of manuals, tractor manuals, Kawasaki, all kinds of stuff for five bucks. And it even had some old vintage comics in it that we sold in the booth. And I think this is the first one of the manuals that have sold out of that lot, but we'll probably end up making $75 to $100 on about 8 to 10 different listings, and I'm pretty happy with this one. This one only sold for $10, free shipping, but it is going to go out for, uh, it's definitely under a pound, so it's going to go out for $280, and uh, minus fees, minus cost, which is almost nothing, and we'll make a decent little profit. All right, I just remembered that we had a viewer gift that I forgot to open out there, and I brought it in here, and we'll open that. It's from Calvin. So, Calvin, if you're waiting for your gift to be open here, we'll open it at the end of this. So, we have four any man going out, two going out to somebody named Danny. So, one Danny left a message, and one Danny didn't. So, thank you to the Danny who didn't, and I'll read the one from Danny who did. He says, I'm buying this for good vibes. I had a shop, and my partner passed, and we decided to do a father-son reselling channel together. Now, my wife is about to start Poshmark videos. We have been blessed by having CP, Cincinnati Picker, pick from the shop, and we have a good friendship now. So if you watch John Cincinnati Picker, you know who we're talking about here. I have seen those videos before. There's a few of them, actually. My son, Parker, loves John to death, and Parker does Lego videos now as well. We bought one of these for Parker, so this is for my wife. It would be great if you could check out the channel and maybe subscribe. I believe I have subscribed to it. I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to go in there and check. Maybe I subscribed on the Picker channel and haven't subscribed on the Commonwealth Flipper channel. But either way, I'll go over there and check. So that's Piqua. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Piqua Resellers. P-I-Q-U-A dash Resellers. And this is from Danny. So if I forget to put a little clip at the end of the video with you on there, maybe I'll remember when I'm editing this because I'm saying it. So I'm speaking to myself. Hey, when you're editing this, put at least a clip in on their channel right here. So thank you, and we wish you the best. And y'all have got to go check it out. It's a great story. So at any rate, thank you, Danny. And this is uh, headed out to your wife. Appreciate it. this one's going out to Jim and to Karen. Hi Kevin, my wife and I love both of your channels. We are starting to list on eBay as of Saturday, September 26th. That's pretty specific. Using a lot of knowledge we have got from you and your kids. Hopefully the inner man will get our stuff moving. Thanks Jim and Karen. Space Coast, Space Coast Flippers. Okay, Space Coast. So does that mean you're in Florida? I'm guessing? I don't know, I probably should have checked. There was a show on when I was a kid, it was called The Great Space Coaster. 
And it was the weirdest, anyway, whatever. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Put your comment below if you know what I'm talking about. Gary Gnu with the Gnu. All right. Anyway, Jim, that's awesome. Space Coast Flippers. Does that mean you have a YouTube channel or is that what you're going to call your store or is that what your YouTube name is when you comment? So we appreciate it and best of luck to you and keep us updated. Hey, last one. This is going out to, this is going out to Australia right here. Hi, Kevin. My wife and myself are huge fans of your channels. We try not to miss any of your segments. We both are 62 years young. Could you please sign the end man for us? God bless you and your family, your lovely family from Don and Chrissy, Sydney, Australia. Awesome. Love to visit there someday. That is awesome. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. And we will get this guy sent out to you all the way in Australia. So you got to pay a little bit extra there for shipping. And we ship these out on pirate ship, y'all. So if we ever have something that goes internationally, we use the flat rate international on pirate ship and the, and the costs are relatively low. Although it's going to cost you 26 bucks to get this, not to get it there, but the cost of the item and the shipping. And uh, we do appreciate it. We know that's quite an expense. And for you guys down under, and there are a bunch of you and overseas, we really, really do appreciate it. And you guys go way out of your way when you buy stuff from us because the shipping is high. So thank you so much and best of luck. And I love the 62 years young, you know, that is amazing. So thank y'all so much. All right, I just sliced this thing open here from Calvin and he has sent us some religious plates, which I think is a ploy to get me talking about history and it probably will work here. Jesus save signs and the uh, ichthys sign, uh, prayer changes things and God bless our nations. You know, it's funny that I got some religious plates here and I want to talk about this one in particular for just a second, but I've had some viewers lately say, why are you only putting ads on your channel from this political party or this political party? And of course, one viewer says it about this party and one viewer says it about this party. Listen, I don't have control over which political ads are run whatsoever. Matter of fact, I don't even know what's being run because the ads I see are not the ads that a lot of you see. I haven't seen a political ad on one of mine and a lot of people are out there complaining, hey, this is at no politics zone most of the time in here. And uh, I, I often joke about, we never talk about politics, religion, but the real thing as resellers that gets people riled up is what kind of printer you use, <laughs> Rolo or Dymo. Forget the not, don't talk about religion or politics. Don't talk about what kind of tape you use and don't talk about what kind of printer you use. That's what really gets people upset. Hey, this one right here, the Greek symbol, I'll just give you a little history. The history of the early Christian church is one of persecution because the Roman Empire was so big and so powerful and they viewed it as a threat. They actually viewed the early church, they would accuse them of cannibalism because of the Lord's Supper and all kinds of things like that. And they would persecute the early Christian church from Nero on Titus, you know, all of them. They would all persecute the early church. And so they had to practice in secret in the catacombs and all that. And this became one of the symbols of the early church for many, many reasons. But of course, this is Greek. This is actually an acronym, and it's some Greek letters here. And essentially what it means is Jesus Christ, Son of God. But in reality, it means Jesus Christ, Son of God, and Savior, Messiah, something like that. And it, of course, takes from the early Christian church's connection to the fish. And there's a lots of fish references and disciples and fishermen and be fishers of men. And a lot of the early disciples were fishermen. And I think Jesus was asked one time about what would the sign be that you are truly the Messiah. And he said the sign of Jonah, that he would be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, just like Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish. And so what would be the sign that you are the Messiah is the fish, okay, is the sign of Jonah. And there's a lot of other connections that you can make to this early symbolism. But it's interesting to see from a historical, non-religious point of view, that the church is going to become more and more powerful. So you see this symbol in the late second century, the, the late 100s, if you will, and you start to see it pop up historically. But in the third century, you see it more. And in the fourth century, you see it a lot more. Of course, that's after the Edict of Milan, where Constantine says Christianity is not, not only going to be legal, but eventually it's going to become the religion of Rome which is quite a shift from its beginnings, of course, in a few hundred years. So what you see 
is the decline of the political state of Rome and the incline, if you will, of the political power of the Roman Catholic Church or what would become the Roman Catholic Church. And so symbolism was an early, early part of that. So at any rate, that's interesting. And just a personal one with me, the Jesus Save sign. I was from Southern California, and I remember those iconic Jesus Save signs in downtown L.A. So if you guys are from L.A., if you're still from the City of Angels or somewhere around there, do they have those signs? I think it used to be on the Church of the Open Door in the Cathedral. I'm curious to know if those signs still uh, still stand there in Los Angeles. It uh, makes me remember fondly Southern California, all those great landmarks that are everywhere. So at any rate, thank you so much for those. We appreciate them. I'm sure we'll find a spot for them. And thanks to everybody for watching. We appreciate you, and we'll see you next time.